Okay guys, today I'm going to show you how you can get file contents using Power Automate. This is actually quite straightforward when you know how, but at the same time it can be complicated and complex depending on how you're getting to your file contents and what you intend to do with it afterwards. I'm going to keep it nice and simple in this video though. I'm going to show you how to get at the file contents and then leave it at that and you can use it for whatever purpose that you need to. So let's go ahead and jump down into the desktop and take a look at how to do this. So for the purpose of this video I'm just going to go ahead and create a brand new flow. We're going to create an instant flow because it doesn't really matter and I'm just going to call this get file content okay and I'm going to go ahead and create a manual trigger now as you know I don't like this new designer so I'm going to go and untick that and I'm going to switch it without saving and I'm going to put this into the traditional view this is the one that I just find so much easier and more intuitive personally um, if you're used to using a new one that's fine you will have just slightly different ways of working um, but for the most part this is what we're going to do today so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to basically use um, a couple of tools to get some files right because at the moment we don't know um, you know where the files are coming from now in your case it might be that you've got files with uh, or emails with files attached right in which case you can get at that file content by using the attachment from the email sometimes though you're actually looking for files which is what I'm going to do in this video tutorial I'm going to click a new step and I'm going to basically get files Okay, so what I'm going to type in and I'm going to go with get files properties only from SharePoint. I'm going to use a SharePoint site for this. We're going to go ahead and choose the first drop down menu and we're going to just select the SharePoint site. The library is going to be um, the documents and then I'm going to select the folder. The folder I'm looking for is going to be shared documents. It's going to be for YouTube and then it's going to be video documents. I'm going to select the entire uh, folder there for video documents. In fact, we do have three subfolders. So when it says include nested items, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I select yes because I'm going to, be, to make sure that I'm looking at all of the internal folders and listing out everything that's inside there. Okay, so we're going to select yes there and that's going to list out all the files that are inside my directory. So from there, the next thing to do is to basically go into the next step. The next step is going to be to get file content. I'm just going to do that. And this time, if you scroll down, you can see there's something called get file content. I'm going to give that a click. And in here, you're going to give it a SharePoint site. The SharePoint site is going to be the same as the one that's listed above. And this time it's asking for a file identifier. Instead of clicking in that little folder icon there, we're going to go ahead and click inside this little area. It's going to bring up our dynamic content. And in here, we're going to scroll down until we find identifier. It is right here. I'm going to give that a click. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to take um, the value of the identifier put it into our content down here but because there's more than one it's going to apply it to each it's going to create a loop okay it's going to work from the first file that is listed in our get files properties only and it's going to loop through until it gets to the very end there are different settings that you could use here uh, we can come in here and you can turn off concurrency controls and you can change various different things uh, in terms of like how many parallels you want to run uh, typically depending on how complex things are you want to run that down lower um, I often find that that helps quite a bit but you know that's more advanced stuff so for now what we're doing here is we're listing all the files inside my four dot YouTube folder um, video content uh, or video documents right and I'm basically going to grab every identifying uh, unique ID for every folder um, or every file sorry and I'm going to go ahead and grab the file contents of every single one of them okay from there I can go ahead and do things now this is the point where really this tutorial kind of comes to a bit of a close because you from here you can do lots of different things you could email this content to yourself you could um, save it somewhere else you could pass it over to artificial intelligence to do something with it the options are quite wide right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I might go ahead and just basically use a compose to do something right so I'm just going to go ahead and use a compose here and I'm going to add in here not the file contents because it's just a, a bunch of you know strings that don't really make a lot of sense in its without its kind of context what I am going to do is I'm going to go and shoot all the way down here and I'm going to be looking for um, a way to identify what it is, right? So here you have file name with extensions. Okay, I'm going to click that and that's going to be our text string for our compose here. So what that means is that although I'm, I'm in, in this tutorial, I'm not doing anything with the file contents, I will be able to identify what the file contents is from that compose. Because this applies to each, essentially I'm going to get a compose 
and a content for every single file that it finds within that directory. Okay, and that's the idea. So obviously this is not tested, so I'm going to give it a save and I'm going to test it and we're going to see if any errors come up. So I'm going to go test, I'm going to go manually test it, we're going to test it. It's going to probably ask me to sign in, do something, yeah, sign in. We're going to go ahead and continue that and then we're going to run the flow. Okay, so at this point we just let it run its course and we'll see what it does. Okay, so we're just going to get done there and it's going to load up this particular screen here. So you can see that it's already got all the file contents and that it is looping through every folder, uh, every file, and we have got an error. Okay, so we're going to click into here and we're going to find out what that error is. Okay, so there's 11 fi files in total. Number one failed. If I go next, we can see that number two failed. If I go next again, we can see that three failed. Number four, did it also fail? No, number four did not fail. Um, so that's quite interesting. If we click on the compose, you can see that the document in question is how to remove locked sections in Microsoft Word.docx. Okay, so what's going on here is essentially that the failed options or the failed um, loops are actually fail failures because the identifier is the folder not a file and it can't find a file based on the folder id okay so you are going to have to do some control elements here we are going to have to basically say that if a fails then we can just continue to proceed to the next step okay so that's we're going to go ahead and fix that in a second i'll show you how to do that so that's your first one right there we obviously have the file contents of that word document that's listed here but it's in a download area okay we can click next and we can see that five uh, is a power bi this is an xlsx file if we click next again uh, here we have dynamic drop downs in an xlsx here we have the next one which is how to create this uh, best cv uh, for free in microsoft word um, so again you can see how it works on the majority of these obviously this is because i had it top level directory rather than the actual folder that contains all the files so again let's go back and we'll edit out our kind of controls okay so let's for example come into here these three dots if we go ahead and we go to actually the compose button just here if we click that we're going to configure after run and if it has failed, um, is skipped or has timed out, we're going to click on done. OK, so that's basically meaning that if this get file contents fails, then it still wants to run that next step. That next step is going to be blank anyway. Um, and then, of course, at the bottom here, I don't think it lets us do this. So I'm going to try anyway. Um, can I terminate? Um, can I terminate inside there? No, you can't terminate inside there, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, but nonetheless, we could... Uh, we could add a blank uh, row in there if we wanted to, but for the most part, that should basically um, at least allow you to continue to run on through without any errors. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of it, right? From here, you could do something else with that content. You could email it to yourself. You could save the file. You could pass it to AI, etc. But for the most part, this is exactly how you would go ahead and do it, right? You Now, if you have an attachment in an email, that is slightly different. You should be able to get to the file contents from the actual trigger of that email coming on in. But if you're looking for documents and you're trying to get the file content from, let's say, SharePoint or maybe uh, OneDrive, this is exactly how you would go ahead and do it. So if you found this useful and informative, make sure to hit that like button guys i really do appreciate that if you're new to the channel subscribe and if you want to know a little bit more about what is going on with various different hints and tips that i have with other kind of uh, pieces of software well why not check that video out right there it's one you might actually be really interested in